I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Last week we we were in Ohio, and now Horse Center is going to focus on Ellis Park. I love it, Matt. I I, I love it. We uh, all, truth be told, neither Matt nor I were in Ohio last week, but of course we covered the Ohio Derby. Bad news, two fills looked absolutely great winning that Ohio Derby, but of course he came out of the race with an ankle injury and we don't know uh, how severe it is yet, but uh, it looks like he's out for the year, possibly could be retired. So bad news there, uh, really dominant performance in that Ohio Derby. Now we're at Ellis Park, Matt, another small track, but of course we're at Ellis Park because Churchill Downs is temporarily closed due to uh, tragic uh, horse deaths uh, it, it, during the Kentucky Derby week and, and after. So here we are at Ellis Park, and I'll tell you what, Matt, I don't think Ellis Park has ever, has ever had a better race than we're about to see in this one million grade one Stephen Foster because... Matt, uh, who, who's our cover boy? This there he is. Smile Happy is our cover boy. That's him winning the Ali Sheba. He is one of seven horses in this eight horse field map that's a graded stakes winner this year. And the only horse that's not the eighth horse lost by a nose last time in the Pimlico special. Yeah, Brian. And you can say an awful lot of other things about this. Uh, uh pretty impressive field. Uh, you mentioned the grade stakes winners, I think three of them are grade one winners, and six of them are millionaires, at least. Six millionaires, that's not bad. And and some of the millionaires are going to be pretty good odds in here. That's what a deep field this Stephen Foster is. Without further ado, let's start with the Foster, Matt. Uh, there is Proxy on the rail, and we've projected him as a, I don't know, what, what, what would you call that, a tepid? A tepid top choice, Matt. A tepid top choice. He's he's three to one, but you could easily say Smile Happy could be the favorite. Maybe Westwell Power, even Rattle and Roll. Uh, a lot of horses to bet here. We'll start though with Proxy, three to one on the morning line. Uh, he's been a good horse for a while. Go Dolphin bred, uh, trained by Michael Stidham, Matt. He he's been a nice horse. Uh, he was on the Derby Trail a few years ago down in Louisiana. But I think he's taken things up a notch lately. He's uh, got his grade one win at the end of last year, and he's coming off two very nice performances around the country. Yeah, and <clears throat> Proxy is one of three horses in this field that won a graded stakes race in their last start. For Proxy, it was the uh, Oaklawn Handicap. Uh, before that, he just missed uh, – winning the big cap in California, just missed by a neck. Um, he, like you said, he's he's been good for a long time. He won the Clark last year. He was third in the Foster last year, $1.7 in earnings. It's hard to uh, not consider him a win contender, as is the case with five or six other horses in, in this race, Brian. And that's why you're probably going to get pretty decent odds on whichever one of them you choose as your top choice. Absolutely, Matt. You you hit the nail on the head there. I, I think, as you can see, we have Proxy as a three-to-one uh, morning line favorite in an eight-horse field. So you know they're going to be spread out as far as who they're betting. And no matter who you pick, I think you're uh, going to be reasonably happy with the odds. Uh, and again, proxy our choice as the morning line favorite, but not necessarily when uh, uh, the gates spring open on Saturday afternoon at Ellis Park. Proxy has been doing battle in the last two. Uh, he just missed in the Santa Anita handicap two starts back. And then last time he just got up in the Oklahoma handicap, the horse he's been doing battle with mostly is Stiletto Boy, among others. Stiletto Boy was right there with Proxy in both of those. While Proxy will be behind horses and on the rail, Stiletto Boy has more speed, Matt. There's about three or four uh, speed types in here. Stiletto Boy is one of them. Stiletto Boy, uh, and, and I think all, which is true of all of them, Stiletto Boy could take the early lead or he could sit just a little bit off the pace. Versatile horse. 
Yeah, and I think a lot of these are versatile horses, Brian. Um, you said there are several of them that sometimes like to run towards the front of the field. We've got no speed balls in this field for sure, but uh, they can they can stalk, they can run, they can press the pace. Sometimes they get to the lead. Yeah, and, and Stiletto Boy has run a lot of good races, Matt. He might be better than ever as well. He's a five-year-old gilded son of Shackelford. He was purchased uh, after winning the Iowa Derby a couple summers ago, and he's been very good for his owner uh, owner and trainer who are brothers, Ed, Ed Moger Jr. and his brother Steve. Um, been very good for them without winning a lot, but he broke through in that Santa Anita handicap win. That was a big grade one win for Stiletto Boy, and then he came right back at Oakland Park and battled all the way and and just missed by uh, by a head. Uh, I guess he was third with another horse splitting uh, proxy in him, Last Samurai. But uh, another bang up race for Stiletto Boy and a horse, like we said, who could be on or near the lead. Without further ado, Matt, let's take a look at the possible pace here in the time form U.S. pace projector we have. And they're actually saying Stiletto Boy is the most likely horse to be on the lead. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And, and you know, Stiletto Boy, to talk more uh, about his record, he was, you mentioned that Oakland handicap, he was third in that blanket finish uh, in that race. He was overlooked in uh, Pegasus World Cup, Brian. I think he was close to 50 to one and ran a, ran a really good third. So um, you, you just can't uh, uh, eliminate him second in the San Antonio. He's been in good form for a long time with close to $2 million in earnings. Yeah, he's he's actually been third in that uh, rich Pegasus World Cup now the last two years as a long shot. Uh, no longer a long shot, though, after his big cap win two starts back. The next horse on the list certainly is the least accomplished. This, this is the lone horse who hasn't won a graded stakes this year, Speed Bias. But on the other hand, Speed Bias is getting good for trainer Ronnie Moquette. He's another one who has a lot of early speed and you see him third there on the pace projector. He could be closer than third early. Yep. Yeah, uh, getting better. Stepped up into graded stakes uh, company last time on, in, on Preakness weekend when he uh, finished second in the Pimlico special, just beaten by a nose and recorded a pretty good speed rating. Yeah, he's he's been getting good. He gave Smile Happy a race a few starts back. Uh, very consistent uh, since he's moved to the barn of uh, Ron Moquette and Speed by is certainly an up-and-comer in the division. Tough spot, grade $1 million race with all these good horses, but Speed by is, is a horse who looks like is a legitimate graded stakes horse. And the horse that just barely got him, who was uh, determined because Speed Bias ran a big race in that Pimlico special, was Rattle and Roll. And Rattle and Roll has been getting there lately, Matt, with three straight grade three wins. Although he is a grade one winner, formerly, earlier in his career. Yeah, he certainly is on a roll uh, in his last uh, three races with those grade three victories. But I think it's noteworthy that Rattle and Roll has been a pretty darn good horse throughout his career. You mentioned that grade one win, Brian. That grade one win happened uh, when he was a two-year-old. Um, and he was really good as a two-year-old. Three-year-old season, maybe not quite as good. But now uh, uh, trainer Kenny McPeak has got him uh, uh, on a roll, maybe in the best form of his career uh three grade threes in a row three really good speed ratings in a row yeah he's one of the horses that will come from farther out of it and he might like the fact that there is looks like there's a legitimate pace here in, in the in the foster you can see one more time that pace projector there's four horses there that uh could be on or near the lead and then you got rattle and roll last samurai proxy who we've talked about and then Happy American uh, is the farthest back in this early pace projection. So there could be uh, two divisions early and uh, this, both divisions, whether you're talking about the speed horses or the horses who like to come from behind have potential winners for sure. Number five is a potential winner, Matt. Smile Happy. Uh, I like where Time Form US had him on the pace projection there in fourth early behind Stiletto Boy, Speed Bias and Westwood Power. 
Smile Happy uh, took the race to West Will Power last time in the Alice Sheba, but he's a horse who can finish as well. He might get first jump on the leaders on Saturday. Yes, Brian, another one from the barn of Kenny McPeak. Um, also the same ownership as uh, Rattle and Roll. I think it's I think it's Lucky Seven Stable or something uh, something similar uh, similar to that. Uh, Smile Happy is relatively lightly raced in comparison to some of the horses in this field, but clearly uh, is in the best form of his career after a smashing win in the grade two Ali Sheba, where he picked up the highest buyer speed figure of the year for horses going a mile or more, older horses going more, more than a mile. Um, another one from the Kenny McPeak barn that flashed a lot of talent as a two-year-old uh, with some nice victories. Not as, not so much, uh, as a three-year-old, but now um, that victory in the Ali Sheba was is really hard to overlook. Yeah, I, I had him that day, and he was eight to one. I'm not going to get any kind of odds like that in here. But again, he shouldn't be too low. He could potentially be the favorite off the Ali Sheba. Let's talk about the two McPeak horses, Matt, because I think Smile Happy is a horse who has a lot of upside. Rattle and Roll looked like he was not quite ready for the Triple Crown Trail. While Smile Happy was, Smile Happy, you know, he was a very good two-year-old like Rattle and Roll, uh, an impressive win at Churchill Downs as a two-year-old. Uh, second in the bluegrass, and then he faded a little bit. He was close to, close to a strong pace. He faded a little bit to finish eighth. He didn't run again, a physical issue. Uh, for a long time, almost a year. He's come back with three three races. Uh, the second one, he had a little bit of excuse, but he certainly improved in the third one after a nice win to debut the year. I think he might be the, the, the more talented of the two McPeak horses and maybe more than any horse in the field, Matt, the horse with the most upside in this Stephen Foster. Another horse who may have upside, he's not young. He's the son of Bernardini. He's been around for a while, but He's gotten good as an older horse. I'm talking about West Will Power, and he had a powerhouse win. He's actually had a couple powerhouse graded stakes wins in the last, oh, six months or so, nine months or so. But that win in the New Orleans Classic was really impressive. Shot him up the rankings of the top older horses in the country. But last time he was stalked by Smile Happy in the Ali Sheba, and he couldn't hold him or Art Collector off. Yeah, and I think that points out uh... – that uh, Smile Happy's performance was really flattered by that quality field uh, beating horses, as you mentioned. We're talking about West Will Power now, but throw in Art Collector, uh, uh, the, the Pegasus World Cup winner. Um, that was a big race, West Will Power from the barn of Brad Cox. Take a look at his career record, Brian. He has rarely done anything wrong. 16 starts, 14 of them in the top three with six wins and seven second place finishes. Yeah, 13 of them in the top two, Matt. West Will Power, a talented horse, another horse who uh, could potentially be out on the early lead in here. Uh, the one thing about West Will Power, I think when he isn't pressured, he can look really, really good. But when the pressure comes, at least so far in his graded stakes career, that's when he comes up just a little bit short. So we'll have to see what he'll do with these other quality speed horses in the Foster. The last two look like more long shots, but Last Samurai, another one of those millionaires you spoke about, Last Samurai has done a lot. The thing about Last Samurai is he has done a lot at Oak Lawn Park. And, and if you look at his uh, career or even his races this year, maybe especially this year, you see a couple wins at Oakland Park in graded stakes. You see a really bang up performance in the Oakland handicap. Then he goes to Churchill and just was never a factor in the Ali Sheba. Yeah. And that, that's an interesting thing to point out that Oakland Park uh, preference. Um, but another horse, I mean, he's uh, he comes running every year, gets his share of wins with 26 career starts. He's the leading money winner in this field over two million dollars but this is quite a field in uh the stephen foster 
Yeah, and and for me, a horse for course. The D. Wayne uh, Lucas trained last summer. I clearly loves Oakland Park. His best races in his career have come there. I just think he's a cut below when he leaves Oakland Park, and this probably is no place to be a cut below. Although on the other hand, you can't completely throw him out. Uh, number eight might be the longest shot on the field. Matt Happy American. Happy American has no speed, as you saw early in our uh, pace projection from Timeform US. He should be last early. Uh, he uh, had some nice wins during the winter, hasn't fared well since, although in the last one he woke up a bit as he came from last to finish with a flourish behind Rattle and Roll in the blame. Yeah, uh, it, that certainly uh, uh, added to his credentials a little bit, That the fact that he got that third place finish. but. Uh, um, for me, uh, being at the back of a field like this makes uh, his task even tougher. Yeah, he's got to pass a lot of good horses. Uh, if the pace is, if, if a couple of them go out fast, maybe Happy American can pick up some pieces and pass horses in the stretch. But uh, yeah, it's, it does seem like a tougher task for maybe the outsider of the field and a, a pretty darn good outsider. That's how good the foster is. Matt, we're going to jump to the female version of the Foster, if you will. That's the Florida Lee, and the Florida Lee is a grade two race, also nine furlongs at Ellis Park, a couple races before the Foster on Saturday there. And uh, uh, instead of going to the field right away, I want to show the time form U.S. pace projector right away, Matt, because it's interesting what they say. Uh, you don't see that yellow arrow pointing towards no speed very often from them. But here we go on the Florida Lee. They say no speed. No speed. Yeah, Brian. I put that yellow arrow in that graphic, Brian, because I wanted to make sure that we pointed that out. Um, I've seen this no speed uh, uh, evaluation of a field only a couple times uh, recently. And, and that that's, that's really interesting when you're talking about uh, a grade two race. Uh, on, on a big card that there is literally no speed. There's nobody, I guess, no Philly or mayor that has any interest of being on the lead. Well, I, I guess the first thing I should say is thank you for the yellow arrow. That helped me see the no speed right away. And everybody else that's watching today can see that no speed. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, somebody's going to have to lead here. But uh, Matt said no speed balls in the foster, but there are a bunch of horses who don't mind being on the lead. There's just really no one in here who who really wants the lead. So someone's going to have it, Matt. Let's look at the field now. And I think there are a few candidates to take the lead. Uh, maybe even the one, Bellamore. She's a, a pretty nice Californian who runs on any surface for trainer Simon Callahan. She's been involved uh, in, in several stakes without breaking through yet, and she's run against some good fillies in California. She's never won on dirt, uh, but her last two dirt performances are pretty solid. Yeah, good races on the turf, good races on the dirt. You do have to point out that uh, the last time Bellamore found the winner's circle was almost a year ago in uh, July of 2022. Yes. Having said that, she has thrown in some good races, including a couple of seconds on the dirt uh, against graded stakes, against good competition. So Bellamore, uh, a little bit of early speed. Maybe she's the one. Moonswag won't be the one. That would be shocking if Moonswag was the one out on the lead because she's a come from behind her. We've seen her for a few years in these stakes races. Um, she can pop up here and there, but uh, probably just a cut below the best in here. Yeah, tough spot for uh, Moon Swag, uh, who last found the winner's circle back in December. Um, and in uh, in recent stakes attempts, uh, just was not quite able to keep up in the Shawnee, a grade three at Churchill Downs. And in the Azari, uh, she finished eighth. Yeah, Moonswag would be one where if there was a strong early pace, I would like her better. We're not going to see that here in the Florida League. Number three interests me a lot, Matt. Uh, we have her as the uh, third choice on the morning line, even though this will be her stakes debut. But uh, every once in a while, Alstall comes around with some good horses, and Royal Take Charge could be a really good horse. We don't know yet. She's only had four races, three wins in a second. 
But the way she won her last, the daughter of Will Take Charge, looks like a potential graded stakes performer. Yeah, it looks like a good spot for uh, Al Stoll to take a shot in uh, graded stakes company uh, with uh, with this horse. Three, As you mentioned, three wins out of four. Um, the last one at Churchill Downs was a victory by almost seven lengths. Looks like a horse developing with upside. Yeah, and, and a lot of these Philly mare races seem to be a mile and a 16th. Nine furlongs makes it a little bit interesting. And I would think that uh, uh, this Philly is one that wants the distance. The daughter, again, a daughter of Will Take Charge, up and coming Philly for Al Stahl. Next on the list, Matt, is Soul of an Angel. She ran on Saturday at Thistle Down. We didn't like her there. We don't like her here. Am I right, sir? Yeah, I I, I looked a couple times and said, is she really running this weekend? Well, I haven't seen anything about a scratch. Yeah, she could be scratched or she could come back off one week. But either way, she would be an outsider in this field and, a, and another horse who really has no early speed. Pauline's Pearl, you could easily say, is the class of the race match. She, if you look at uh, money earned or, or, or stakes wins over the years, Pauline's Pearl fits the bill uh, as a, a potential winner, a really well-bred Stone Street Philly match. Uh, the only thing with Pauline's Pearl is since uh, winning – the Sam Houston Lady Classic early this year. Her last two have been rather dull, and uh, Amore, who we have listed as the favorite just outside her, uh, beat her pretty easily in both of those races. Yeah, that, that's true, Brian. And and you mentioned Stone Street, uh, trained by Steve Asmussen. Those connections have had so many really good older fillies and mares. You know, I mean, we're talking about Clarier, uh, uh being the star uh, uh, distaffer from that stable. And, uh, uh, you know, she has so many good races in the past, uh, uh, almost $2 million in earnings, seven wins. But, yeah, Brian, those last two, even though they were in grade ones and, and this field is, is probably some class relief, um, the sixth in the La Troyenne and the seventh in the Beholder Mile out in California were are, are, are just a little bit discouraging. Yeah, a, a little lacking, a little dull. Sometimes fillies and mares they 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 lose they lose some of their interest to be racehorses, and we don't know if that's happening with Pauline's Pearl, but it's certainly a consideration. Uh, after those two kind of dull races, she now finds a race. She deserves to be the second choice on the morning line, but she now finds a race with very little early speed, which I don't th don't think helps her. And Matt, getting back to those Stone Street uh, fillies and mares, I, I would throw in Rachel Alexandra as as a, as a good example of a Stone Street filly. Yeah, th there's been a few of them, Brian. Yeah, there there have been a few of them, Matt. You're right, and uh, Rachel was my favorite. Although Rachel wasn't a Stone Street filly early on, yeah. she became. A Stone Street Philly, but I digress. All right, let's get back to the field and the favorite, Amore, Matt. Amore, a daughter, a daughter of Uncle Mo, uh, trained by Brad Cox. Uh, she is the deserving favorite here, uh, a Philly who's uh, kind of bounced around a little bit early in her career. She 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 ran some good races on turf. Um, she had uh, she had one race where she was pulled up, but she is putting things together. Uh, so much so that she was able to win three stakes races in a row before being beaten last time. Yeah, three stakes wins in a row at different tracks. So no horses for courses uh, with this one. Um, she won that uh, Beholder Mile out in California. She won the Bayacoa at uh, Oaklawn Park. And she won a uh, non-graded stake at fairgrounds so, so really versatile most recently she was fourth in the la Troyenne, but had a really really wide trip yeah she was wide she was so far back she's farther back than she wants to be that actually gives me more hope here in the florida leaf for her more hope for the favorite that's not necessarily a great thing but she's a philly uh, under flavian prat who can be right there early and can be stalking the pace and, and again in a race without much pace i think that gives her an advantage over the second choice on the morning line pauline's pearl so i'm already yeah that, that loss certainly was not bad last time three wins before that 
Amore looks like the horse to beat to me in here. But the seven horse, just like Royal Take Charge, is another one who is interesting to me, Matt. Hardy Constitution probably has enough speed to get out there. Uh, Joe Sharp has this filly certainly headed in the right direction. She's on a winning streak. Um, I can see her going to the lead here. And in a grade two, $400,000 race that hasn't come up particularly strong, it might be time for this daughter of Constitution to make some noise. Yeah, and Joe Sharp's not not afraid to take a shot and run his horses when they are in good form. And again, uh, this is a good feat. Turns out to be a good field uh, uh, to do that in. This is a Pennsylvania bred, Brian, that most recently won a Pennsylvania bred stake on the turf at Penn National. Um, you mentioned, and that came after that uh, allow nice allowance win on the main track at uh, Churchill Downs. And she also won a turf allowance at fairgrounds. Yeah, she's been bouncing back and forth from uh, turf to dirt and she's been doing it well. She she is streaking and we've seen Joe Sharp horses before go from turf to dirt and back and forth and do well. It, it, looking at that time form US Pace Projector one more time, she, she's actually the one that they picked out. They say Bellamore close. Royal Take Charge close, Amore close, but they picked out Hardy Constitution. She's run in sprint races and she's been uh, at least near the early lead in several of her races. So Hardy Constitution coming in on a streak could be the one who inherits the lead in a race without much lead, uh, without much early pace. Music Street doesn't have a lot of speed. I, I, I can't really recommend her. She's thrown in just enough interesting races to maybe think she has some potential but this doesn't look to be the spot in my eyes for music street no she looks like a nice allowance horse a nice allowance horse and one who has to rally in a paceless race so that's our look at the florida lee there are other uh, stakes races uh on saturday at ellis park it's foster day basically at churchill downs that's moved over to ellis park so there's a bunch of good horses running they have the wise dan on the turf they have some good sprint races good filling mare races so check out that huge card at ellis park matt but before we uh, close the show everybody wants to know your top picks how about we start with the uh with the florida lee this time i'm changing it up phillies first phillies first why not brian um yeah as we did the rundown in the in the field uh it, it sounded like we had a lot of question marks about a lot of horses Horses who maybe are not in the best form, are they going to regain their form? Horses stepping up a little bit, but it, through all of that, the uh, recent form for Amore um, impressed me. I, I, I know we're talking about a favorite here and, and maybe a pretty heavy favorite, but I just couldn't land on anybody else. Matt, I am right there with you. And and real quick, a look, if you can see our top picks here, this doesn't happen very often. Matt and I are on the same horses in both of these races. That's uh, that's a good thing. That's disappointing. I'm not sure which, but yeah, I, I, similar feelings to Matt. I, I just think this race sets up really well for more race. She's going so well right now. She's clearly the one to beat. I really did look at... Uh, uh, Royal Take Charge. I really did look at Hardy Constitution as very interesting horses who could be part of the pace, up and comers, but uh, I couldn't go with anybody over Amore in the Florida Lee. And we're on the same horse in the Foster, Matt. Yeah, we are, Brian. Uh, um, you know, we talked about the quality of this field and talked about how many horses you have to really consider with a legitimate chance to win the race. But my final decision actually came down between the two Kenny McPeak horses, but I settled on Smile Happy. I was so impressed with his performance in the Ali Sheba. And I, you know, looking for a way to separate a horse in that group of five or six that make them a winner. I, I think that Smile Happy might ultimately be the most talented horse in the field and uh, has room to run even better than that Ali Sheba. I agree with everything you said. Plus, I think he gets first jump on the leaders. 
I think the pace will be contested, and I think Smile Happy can sit in a nice spot, pocketed in fourth early ahead of all the horses that like to rally. Loved his Ali Sheba. I think he's got the upside. I'm on the son of Ron Happy as well, Matt. That's our show today, folks. But before we go, you know what we do. We get a parting shot from my friend, Matt Schiffman. Hey, Brian, we did it. We did another horse center. We've done a few of them. It's still so much fun, and I think you uh, folks can see that. And we do the show for you. So thank you so much for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, do it. Comment. We love the comments. Uh, hit the notifications, all that. We do appreciate it. We also appreciate Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Our good friend in the Louisville office, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics. And, of course, Time Form U.S., for the pace projections. But most of all, we thank you for watching each and every week. Matt and I sure do appreciate it. We'll be back next week right here on Horse Honor for another show. Good luck this weekend. Hopefully you're going to get some winners at Alice Park.